Hey everybody, AJ Campbell here. I am Texas Green Tea on Twitter, and this is video one of how to build a dogfight flight sim in Unity 3D. So we're going to jump right into it. First things first, I'm going to show you what we're going to build. I'm pressing the play button right here, and we are going to get flying right away. It's going to take us uh, probably a little over a half hour, but hopefully less than an hour of video uh, in order to build this whole thing. And what we've got here is basically a one-on-one uh, -on -one flight sim where you, the blue plane, have a chance to fight against the opponent, the red plane, and of course we've got guns, we've got the ability to try and shoot him down, uh, we actually are going to build some AI and teach him how to shoot us down as well. Um, so there's a lot of stuff going on here, uh, it's a, it's, a lot of it is pre-built by Unity actually, so we're going to use some of their templates um, to get us up and running and then we're going to add in some custom scripts. The scripts are going to be very easy to work with, all of them are pretty short and if you don't like to write a lot of scripts you can feel free to download the, the ones I've got ready to go in this uh, project. This whole thing is going to be available on GitHub um, and I'll provide the link for that as well. Um, so if you want to download the project so you have something to work from, um, you can do that, or you can start from scratch with uh, what you get uh, in Unity's standard assets. So that's what, I, what I'm going to walk you through starting right now. This is going to be a, a six video series, um, and in the first one we're just going to get some cosmetic stuff going from the template scene that we get from Unity, uh, and, uh, and we're going to build from there. We're going to get it looking like this, and then we'll uh, move on to some of the more advanced fu functionality in the next video. Um, so, um, to start with, if you haven't been to the Asset Store yet, definitely go to the Asset Store and download Unity's Standard Assets Pack, because we use that in a lot of these tutorials. There's a lot of good stuff to work with here. Um, when you download Standard Assets, you'll also get a package with it called Sample Scenes, and in there you'll have Scenes. In the Scenes folder you'll have a bunch of options to play with. There's one called Aircraft Jet 2 Axis. An aircraft jet AI. The AI is the one we're going to use, so I'm double clicking that to pop it open here. If you notice, there's a bunch of waypoints already listed in this scene. You can see the yellow line shows the flight path of the AI plane. Because that's there, and because it's assigned to this plane already, when I hit play, you're going to see the plane able to fly itself. I'm not going to be touching the controls on this one. This thing is just going to take off and follow that flight path all by itself. So you get this standard built into Unity with their standard asset package. Uh, you don't have to write any code, you don't have to configure anything, you just open the scene up and hit play and it already works as you can see. Um, so this is what we're going to start with and we're going to start to modify this thing a little bit. One of the first things I want to do is adjust this flight path a little because we're going to find as we start playing around with the AI of this character, he's going to probably be flying pretty close to the floor. And if we, he gets too close to the floor, we're going to have him able to explode as well. Right now there's no explosions functional yet, but we're going to build those. And when that's the case, it's going to be pretty dangerous for him to get too close to the floor. So I want to take these waypoints and lift them up a little bit so that he has some, some breathing room to get some air before he uh, starts to, to bank and make his turns. Um, whenever you're editing the uh, standard assets that you get straight from Unity, you may or may not want to um, uh, reference the originals again. And so I always like to take these originals and package them up by themselves. And then when I need to use one of them, when I need to edit it or modify it, I, I'll make a copy of it and bring it outside of the original section. So the first thing I want to do is create an empty object. I'm going to call that original scene. I'm going to take everything else that was already in the scene and drop it into the original scene object. Now, when I save this, I don't want to save over the original because I want that to still be intact as well. So I'm going to go up to uh, Save Scene As, and I'm going to go into my Scenes folder. You can put this anywhere, but this is where I like to put it. Um, and I'm going to call this Dog Fight Main V2, because V1 is the one I did already. So we're going to start from scratch. Okay, so now that we've saved, saved this as a unique scene, now I can start to edit this without worrying about overwriting what was already there. Um, so everything in the original scene here, I may want to get back to the original, so I'm going to, instead of editing this one, I'm going to duplicate it by hitting Control D, and then I'm going to drag it outside the original scene. So I'm going to close that. Now I know that everything outside my original scene is the stuff that I've modified. Um, so I'm going to take these waypoints, 
I'm actually going to pop this open and turn the original waypoints off so that I don't have two copies active in the scene. Um, I'm going to take the, the copy that I just made and drag them upward. I think I'm going to zoom out and drag them backward a little bit as well. I think what I'm also going to do is make the uh, AI character, this guy, a little bit larger because when we get our player character into the scene we'll find that he's a little bit hard to track down in the sky if he's too small. So we're going to make him bigger. Um, so I'm going to go into the original scene, I'm going to grab him, duplicate, I'm going to hide the original and drag the duplicate outside of original scene so that now I have a waypoint tracker and an AI object both out of the original scene. These are my editable objects. Now I know that these will not affect the originals because I've made copies of them. Okay, um, so I'm going to take this guy's scale and I'm going to double it. We have a scale one, I'm switching it to scale two. So now you see he's, whoops, now you see he's, whoops, here we go, scale two. There we go. Now you see he's twice as big as he was before. Um, this will allow, his to, uh, allow us to spot him easier when he's up in the air. Um, the other thing I want to do is change his color. Now I recommend anytime you're going to change the color of a mesh you do it by uh, adding a new material instead of just playing with the materials albedo because if his material is used by any other character, for example if we drop the player in here um, right next to him, if the player has the same material as he does then I try and change this albedo and it's going to change the player as well. I could change it right there, but I don't want the player to turn red as well, so I'm going to undo that, and instead of changing the albedo, because this is a property of the material, instead of that I'm going to change the material itself. To do that, I just go into the mesh renderer here, under materials you see the first one on the list is fuselage gray and you see it's listed right there. Now I've already done this a few times, I've made a bunch of other colored materials but the way you do it is just select the original material and hit control D just like we did before to duplicate and then you can rename this to uh, let's say fuselage um, let's go green and then because that's not green yet then we change the albedo here in the template and now we have a green material to work with and if I want to turn this guy green I can come back to the body and replace the original material I had with a green one and so I don't want green I want to go red uh, so I'm actually gonna grab all of the fuselage objects because all of these have mesh renderers they they make up different pieces of the plane character and so I'm gonna drag the red material onto all of them at the same time and you see that got the body not the wings yet because those are in here so I'm gonna pop this open select all here and drag in the red material um, and there's actually a couple more that represent the wheels that I found just by experimenting with this. If you turn him over you can see his wheels are still blue. Let's fix that. There we go. So now he is completely red. Um, and you'll notice when we drag the player in that that the red only uh, attaches to the opponent because the opponent now has a unique material that works for just him. Okay, so uh, next thing we want to do is actually get the player object into the scene. Now, Unity, uh, um, Unity has a lot of templates available, not just scenes, but uh, uh, characters as standalone prefabs as well. So we're going to go into Standard Assets and find one that works for us. So under Standard Assets, I have Vehicles, Aircraft, and prefabs. So in there I have an aircraft jet and an aircraft jet AI. The jet AI is exactly the same one Unity used in this template scene. Um, so we don't need that. What we need is the original aircraft jet because this guy has a player controller attached to him and as soon as I uh, and put him in the scene, you'll see when I hit play, now I'm not following the uh, AI player anymore. Now I'm following a controllable player. So you see I'm focused on the blue guy, and I'm pressing the arrow keys to control this guy. So it works out of the box. Now, if you notice, I'll crash into the ground, and nothing really happens. No explosions yet. I hit the space bar, and there's no bullets yet. We're going to build all
all of that into um, the player plane in the next few videos. Um, so, so we got a lot of fun stuff coming up. I think in the next video we are going to start working on the bullet functionality. We're going to spend a video creating a, a good looking bullet uh, and then we are going to spend the video after that um, teaching that bullet how to fire out of a gun that we're going to attach to the plane. Following that we're uh, going to do a little bit more AI on the enemy plane um, so that um, it, when we get near him he'll go into attack mode and he'll start chasing us and actually start firing back at us. And and, and that'll be it. I think it's going to be a, a six video series. Um, we'll see if we can get it all done in a half hour, but it's probably going to be more like an hour. Um, but, uh, but we got a lot of fun stuff coming up. The, the bullets are next, so stick around.